All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now we learned a little bit about parametric equations in the last video. In this video, we're going to talk about the process of eliminating the parameter. Now eliminating the parameter involves making a substitution from one parametric equation into the other parametric equation in order to remove the parameter t completely. The end result is always going to be a single equation of x and y. So we're taking our parametric equations and we're trying to get back to what we're used to using. What we're used to seeing, just these equations for curves that only involve x and y. Now let's start off with the example we had last time. Let's see if we can eliminate the parameter and find the equation of this line. Now we usually want to, in, if we're just given numbers and t's, uh, one way we can do it is to solve for t and then plug that solution into the other equation. And as we'll see in a later example with some sines and cosines, the other way is to um, find the expression equal to the other parametric equation. So if I could find 2t here, where y equals 2t plus something, I could plug in x there. And actually, that's one way we could do it here, uh, but we won't need to, as we'll see. So let's go ahead and get started. I have that y equals t plus 6. And so if I try to solve for t here, that's going to give me t is equal to y minus 6. So now I have t. Now once I have t, I can plug this into the other parametric equation. It's very important that whichever parametric equation you solve t for, you plug that result back into the other equation. Uh, if I plug in t equals y minus 6 here, everything's going to simplify down to just y equals y, and that's not very helpful at all. That's not what we're looking at. So I'm going to plug in my t here. Now x equals 2t, and we just found that t is y minus 6. So this is going to be 2y minus 12. Now let's go ahead and get y on the other side. Let's switch these places of y and x. I have 2y equals x minus 12. And from here, dividing both sides by 2, I get y equals 1 half x minus 6. And actually, I have this backwards. I've made a mistake somewhere. Oh, I have x plus 12. 2y equals x plus 12. I just brought this 12 to the other side. So it should be plus 6. Whew, scared me for a second. All right, so we end up with this line. And this is exactly what we thought we would get. This is a line in point intercept, uh, slope intercept form where my slope is 1 half and my y intercept is 6. And that's exactly this line that we drew out just when we were kind of looking at different values of t and plugging in. So that's kind of relating to what we did before, but let's look at a couple of new examples. Eliminate the parameter and sketch the curve of the parametric equations. So first we're going to look at the parametric equations x equals t squared, y equals t minus 2, and 2 is less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 4. So we're only looking at t on a small interval here. So when we sketch our curve, we want to make sure that we only sketch the area blocked out by this t. Now first I notice that this equation here is a bit easier to solve for t, isn't it? Right away I add 2 to both sides and I get t is equal to y plus 2. Okay. Now I can take this result and plug it into my other parametric equation and I get x is equal to t squared but plugging in I get y plus 2 squared. Now we haven't gotten to our conic section yet, so I don't expect you to recognize what this is going to be. And actually we need to simplify it in a little bit of a different way for it to be in proper form. But let's go ahead and plug in some values to find this curve. We have to be a little bit careful first. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my coordinates. I'm going to draw it way over here. Oop, let's make that a straight line. I'm going to draw it way over here because I'm going to need a lot of space in X, as we'll see in a second. Now before we start drawing, I have this restriction in t. My t is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 4. So let's try to figure out what one of my variables are going to be restricted to now, now that I don't have any t's here to refer to. Now if t is greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to 4, notice that my y then is less than or equal to and, and greater than or equal to. Um, we can take it right here, y is t minus 2. So the smallest that y is going to be is when t is at its minimum as well. 
So the least that y can be is 2 minus 2. I'm just taking my parametric equation for y and I'm plugging in the minimum value of t, or rather the value of t that's going to make y its minimum. Now I can do the same thing. The maximum y I'm going to get for the range of t I'm given here is when t is equal to 4. So the maximum y is going to be is 4 minus 2. So in other words, y is going to be between 0 and 2. Now the reason I chose y is because I could choose x, but then I have to figure out what y value gives me a square that's equal to that x. It's a little bit more complicated. This way I can just plug y in and very quickly solve for what x I get. Now it's a little bit backwards to what we're used to, um, but in this case it's going to simplify this down for us. So let's take a look at what we have. When y equals 0, I'm going to have x is 0 plus 2 squared, or 2 squared, so that's just 4. So let's say 4 is, let's say 4 is about here. So my x coordinate's a little bit different than my y coordinate. That's okay. Let's put a 4 right here. So I have 4, 0. When y equals 1, I plug in a 1 here for y. I get 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So when y equals 1, x equals 9, which means I have this other point at x equals 9, y equals 1. And let's go to the very maximum of y now. Let's say I'm all the way up to y equals 2. When y equals 2, I have x is equal to 2 plus 2 squared, so that's 4 squared, or 16. And that gives me the point x equals 16 when y equals 2. So this curve's going to look a little bit something like this. The way I've drawn it here it looks like a straight line, and actually you know, I'm going to fix this a little bit because I don't want to lead you astray. This is not a straight line. So let me realign this y-axis so that it's more in line with what we have here. Let's call this 1 and let's call this 2. Okay. So that means these points are going to be in a little bit different positioning. When x was 4, y was 0, so no problem. When x is 9, y is 1. And when x is 16, y is 2. Now this should look, now it still doesn't look great, uh, but it's not a line. This is actually a sideways parabola, and it's curving down like this here, and then going up. Okay, so it's just this single portion of this parabola because we're limited by that t. All right, hopefully this was more helpful than confusing. But let's take a look at one more example of this. We aren't always going to have just t's and numbers. Sometimes we're going to have trig functions. And with trig functions, we know we're going to have to know those trig identities. Now here we see an identity that we're used to, y equals cosine 2t. So let's see if we can use this to eliminate the parameter. y is cosine of 2t. So I want to use one of my double angle formulas for cosine, and I want to use the one that has only cosines in it. The reason is, is I know that x is cosine, and if I have anything other, if I have some sines in there and, said, and not just cosines, I can't substitute in anything for sine just yet. So we know that cosine of 2t is the same as 2 cosine squared of t minus 1, and cosine of t is x, so I get that y is 2 x squared minus 1. Now we also have a restriction on this problem, and it doesn't look like it right now, um, but it's kind of built in, and whenever we're dealing with trig functions we're going to have these restrictions that are kind of implied by the problem. I know that x is cosine of t. Now cosine of t is always less, uh, greater than or equal to negative 1, and it's always less than or equal to positive 1. So because x is equal to cosine t, I actually have this restriction where x is going to be between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so we have to be a little bit careful. Uh, I also have this same restriction for y, don't I? I have that y is also going to be between negative 1 and 1 because y is cosine of 2t and cosine of 2t still needs to be between negative 1 and 1. So I'm only going to be looking at a portion of this axis between negative 1 and 1 for all of my x and y values. 
So let's go ahead and plug in an x equals negative 1. When x is negative 1, I have y equals negative 1 squared, which is 1. So I'll have 2 minus 1, which is 1. When x is 0, I have 0 minus 1, so negative 1. And when x equals 1, I again have 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 1. So this equation, we've eliminated the parameter, we've plugged in some points, we can go ahead and draw this out. This is going to be a parabola, but this parabola doesn't keep going. It stops here, and it stops here. Now that doesn't mean that I have a limitation on t. What that means is as t increases, I'm going to be moving along this portion of the parabola, and I'll probably just be going kind of back and forth, back and forth, maybe like a pendulum. Okay? My t can keep going up. But as t increases, cosine is going to cycle through positive and negative numbers. And cosine of 2t will also cycle through these positive and negative ones, anywhere in between there. Okay, So that's how we eliminate the parameter. And we'll see some examples of going in the opposite direction in the next video. Sometimes we're given some information about a curve, and we want to find the parametric equation for that curve. We'll see you there.